massage nerds. Today I'm going to be talking about headaches. And headaches can either be a disorder from a medical condition <clears throat> or a symptom. Let's just say that you have high blood pressure. So you could have a headache due to the high blood pressure. So that's the symptom, okay? Or it could be something else going on. So I'm going to talk about the four main ones, which are sinus headaches, which are usually here, and show you some techniques, and then TMJ headaches, migraine headaches, and uh, stress headaches. Different things can trigger headaches, okay? You can have stress, anxiety, um, you can have foods, you know, like for migraine headaches, a lot of them get triggered by certain foods like caffeine, the lack of caffeine or too much caffeine, chocolate, cheese, red wine, bright lights, loud noises, those may trigger, you know, some migraine headaches. And then sinus, obviously, when people have allergies, see, you know, they might be seasonal. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. And then the TMJ, let's say you go to the dentist and you have to have your mouth open for a long period of time, because I've worked on clients that have had that issue. Or they grind their teeth, or they're, you know, they're uh, lock their jaw. So all of that can cause TMJ, you know, uh, headaches too, tension headaches. And then the suboccipitals too, the suboccipital muscles, there's a, a set of four on each side below the occiput, and they can trigger headaches. They are known as the ghost headache muscles. So I'll show you when he turns prone, I'll show you some techniques for that. So let me start with the easy one. Let's start with the sinus headaches. We have four sinuses on the face. So we've got the, <clears throat> I'm sorry, the four sinuses are the paranasal sinuses. We've got the frontal, the sphenoidal, the ethnoidal, they're behind the eyes. And then you've got your maxillary sinuses. And the maxillary sinuses are the largest. So one of the things that you can do, you know, once you've already started, you know, warmed up the face. And usually I do not use any oil or anything on the face because people have a natural oil on their face. But you want to make sure you can do some trigger points right here, right before, this is the zygomaticus, the zygomatic bone, right below it is the maxillary sinus. And the sinus, um, they are empty chambers that resonate sound. They're actually, this is why, one of the reasons why when you are uh, congested, your voice changes because the, the spaces are not hollow, so the voice can't resonate against the hollow spaces. But you can do some trigger points here from the nose out, you know, be very gentle because sometimes if people do have sinus problems, these can be really sore, okay? So this will be the maxillary, and then you're gonna treat the frontal, you know, the frontal bone, the frontal sinus, you can do, and it's right along here, you can do some tapping all around, all around the sinuses, some gentle tapping. You can do some uh, pinching. You're also getting the ethnoid. The ethnoid bone is behind the eyes, and it can cause headaches. If you've got, you know, um, your sinuses are acting up, it can really give you even pain behind your eyes. You've, you've got your sphenoidal bone, which is the one that's behind, it's inside the cranium, and it's, you can see, well, you can't see it, but there's the edges of it right here. So you can push back and forth a little bit. And the pituitary gland sits in the cella tersica of the sphenoidal bone, so that it's inside your cranium here, but it sits. So this is good to kind of do your best to stimulate and get some movement here on the sphenoidal bone. So you've got your, your frontal, your sphenoidal, your ethnoidal, and then your uh, maxillary sinuses. There's four of them. So you can, like I said, these are just some simple techniques. You can do trigger points, you know, holding them, trigger points here, trigger points here, and then some tapping. I also like to do this type of tapping with two fingers right here. I like to do it like around seven. But 
But that is for people that are having some, you know, headaches due to sinus congestion. You can also do the figure eights around the eye. That really helps. You can even put a little bit of a compress, you know, a warm compress around the eyes for your clients. But that would be for the sinuses, okay? So now while I'm here, let's go to the TMJ. TMJ or due to mastication, sometimes people, like I said, if they grind their teeth or lock their jaw or they have TMJ because they've been to the dentist, that you're going to work on the muscles of mastication. And that's the temporalis, the masseter, the medial and lateral pterygoids. That's very important. So you've got your temporalis all around here. This is your temporal bone. You have two of them. So you want to do some circular motion here along the temporalis muscle, which inserts right here, right where the um, mandible is with the uh, masseter muscle. So be careful here with the parotid gland. The parotid gland is about two fingers from the ear. So, or you can have your client clench their jaw. Oh, there, I feel it right there. I'm on the masseter. So that is the masseter right there. You can do circular motions. And like I said, if they do have problems with this because of, you know, an issue and they're getting headaches, it usually triggers into the temporal area. So like I said, there are different types of headaches. So make sure that you ask a lot of questions in your medical history. And then you want to make sure and work the pterygoids, the medial and lateral pterygoids, all the chewing muscles. Chewing muscles of mastication are the temporalis, medial and lateral pterygoids, and masseter. So you can do, again, you can do trigger points here, especially here at the TMJ. You can also do the intraoral massage, but you've got to wear a glove. If you, know, if you can wear a glove and go inside the mouth and work the masseter and the TMJ all the way back here. And, and like I said, if they have trigger points that refer, just make sure you follow it all the way through. I would hold the trigger point, like let's say he's got TMJ. I would hold this trigger point anywhere from 15 to, you know, up to 90 seconds if I need to hold it until it subsides, until the pain goes down, let's say from a six to a three. So you want to hold the trigger points, but you also want to make sure and work the temporalis muscle here. You can do circular with your, with your Finger pads, not nails, but <laughs> finger pads. You can use your whole palm of your hand, and this feels really good too. But those are to treat the uh, TMJ headaches. And of course, you do your ending strokes at the end, you know whatever to do, finish doing the phase. Okay, now let's move on to migraine headaches. Okay, migraine headaches usually, this is the most common type of headache, are uh, the migraine headaches. And it happens, I think like an 80% of women, their onset is usually women in their 20s. And these a lot of times have to do with, um, with hormonal imbalances, or like I said, you know, food, certain foods may trigger it, or, uh, bright lights or loud noises or hormonal imbalances. So make sure that you do a scalp massage. And I will tell you this, most people will not come in to get a massage when they have a migraine because all they want to do is be in a dark room, in a cool, dark room without any noise. So they usually come in when the headache is subsiding. Migraines are really very painful. They make you nauseated. So you want to make sure that the client feels well enough to be on the table. You're going to be very careful. And if you could remove this, you want to make sure and work the scalp. The scalp, all the muscles on your scalp are... Um, you know, very important to, to work. So obviously you're gonna work the masseter. You're gonna start with circular motions here, you know, all the way to the occipital ridge and up. The scalp, the, the occipital frontalis is the muscle that goes from here all the way up to, the fr to underneath your eyebrows. So you wanna make sure and work this muscle that works all the way across here. There's a fascia here on the top of your head. So that sometimes gets really tight. 
So make sure you work the whole scalp and all the muscles here. You, you can do circular motions, or you can also do, I'll show you right now, some hair pulling. And I want you to make sure and do the occipital frontalis so you can go cross, I'm doing, I'm doing this, cross fiber along the occipital frontalis, which actually goes all the way up to your eyebrow. So this is why it's important for you guys to work the forehead. It's the muscle that raises your eyebrows. So you want to make sure and work all of this area here for when people get a migraine headache. And after you've worked, you know, one or two minutes, it really feels good. And remember, when they've had a migraine, they're going to be sore. Their head's going to be really sore. But I wanted to show you the hair pulling. You get your hand, open your fingers through their hair, and kind of twist it a little bit. And it doesn't hurt, you know, it just kind of really starts pulling the, um, the fascia and releasing some of that tension. So this is a good, and you, you want to be real gentle and real slow. All I'm doing is putting my hand, closing my fist, and turning. So it's putting my hand through his hair, closing, making a fist, and turning. So and you can do that. You know, it's going to take you a good five minutes to really work the scalp. But this is very important for the headaches. Make sure you don't wear any perfume or have any candles on when people have a migraine headache when they come in for a massage because it might trigger it again. So you want to make sure and, and work the trapezius muscle, you know, the uh, levator scapula muscle, all of these muscles here that insert at the occipital ridge. And now after you've worked the scalp and you've worked the face, you want to make sure you work the face too with migraine headaches. They might have other trigger points. Then you're going to turn them prone and I'll show you the next one. Okay, so now your client is prone. So while you're sitting, this is one of the things I like to do. It's very important for you to cup right at the occipital ridge. You can see here, are the cervicals. We did another video for the axial skeleton. So these are the cervicals right here. And I'm going to use that right now as an example for the next type of headaches, which will be the tension headaches, because you've got your four suboccipitals, and some of them originate right here on C1 and C2. So you want to cup. Here's the occipital ridge. You want to cup underneath, and I'm just going back and forth here. And this is really good still for migraine headaches, back and forth or circular motion. So it's back and forth like medial lateral and circular motion or, you know, uh, inferior superior. So I'm doing medial lateral, circular, and then inferior superior, okay? I'm going to do all those three movements right along the occipital ridge. Remember, you have lots of muscles that insert right there. And when people get uh, uh, migraine headaches, I don't know why, but right here they have two little points where they have trigger points, almost all of them, just like right around here. So be very gentle. Work them out. You can hold them. Have your client breathe, and you can hold it up to, you know, anywhere from 15 seconds to 90 seconds. But no more than that, if, if it still hasn't released, you can come back and just treat it again. And again, you want to work on the occipital frontalis muscle. Occipital, because it starts at the occiput, and it goes all the way to the frontalis muscle. So this muscle covers, and most of it is fascia. So you want to make sure and cover this from the prone position, because you're getting it now from here. And this is still for migraine headaches. And you also want to go in and pull the hair, where you go in, make a fist, and then turn. Go in, make a fist, and then turn. And just do that all over the scalp. It really feels good. if you Do it nice and gently and, so and slow. No movement. When somebody has had a migraine headache, no movement should be fast, and no movement should be hard because it 
you know, it, it can trigger the headache, the migraine headache again. So that's for the migraine headaches. Now I am going to move on to the stress headaches. Stress headaches are for people that either look down at their phone or they are, you know, uh, working on a computer and this is when your head doubles in weight when you're looking down or, you know, they have their shoulders up. So make sure as a massage therapist that your shoulders are down when you're working, that you, you're not doing this, working on somebody that you're using your legs for power and strength, not your upper body because then you end up like this. And that's a lot of the tension headaches that you may get. So tension headaches are the number one headaches. First, the, the, is the tension headaches is the number one, then migraine headaches is number two. The TMJ and sinuses are not that com is common. But so again, for a tension headache, you want to work the occipital ridge, just the way I showed you for the migraine. So you want to do all along the occipital ridge, but you want to make sure, and now you're going to work the four muscles. So you want to make sure and work the suboccipitals. Suboccipitals means they are underneath the, the occiput. You've got four on each side. To me, they look like little spiders. You've got the rectus capitis, posterior major, and then posterior minor, and then the oblique, um, the oblique capitis superior and the oblique capitis inferior. They're four on each side, and they are known as the ghost headache muscles. So you want to make sure, and they originate from C2, C1 and C2. So you want to make sure. And work them out right here. Go to those uh, transverse processes right here on C1 and C2. You can get them both. I like to get one at a time, but for the sake of the video, I'm doing both here. And I'm going all the way across just with my thumb pads all the way across here. And you want to make sure and just work these muscles. These are known as the ghost headache muscles. You also want to work the levator. The levator, remember, originates from one through four here, and it inserts on the on the um, on the scapula right here. So you want to make sure and work the levator because it elevates, and this is also where you have a lot of uh, tension that can may have a lot of tension headaches. And then the upper trapezius. The upper trapezius is this meaty part here. So you want to do some unruffling here of the upper trapezius. Some money, 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 where you kind of pinch it here. You want to do the squeezing where you're lifting, separating the fibers. All I'm doing is lifting and separating the fibers of the suboccipitals. And if they do have tension headaches, Obviously, you want to work all of this, you know, all of this. The rhomboids, you can have trigger points. You can have the splenius capitis, the splenius services that may cause, you know, also some of the headaches. So you really want to make sure and address all this area for tension headaches. You know, so you've got to do some of the work for the rhomboid area. You can do your forearms right here from this side. You can do the uh, closed fist like the taco here. here. And just go up and I also when I'm here at the end I like to use my knuckles here like I can really cup in like right under the uh, suboccipitals here and I'm doing that with with my knuckles so these are just some techniques for tension headaches and these are usually people that look down a lot and you can imagine if you know your muscles have to hold up your head that weighs three times as much, it really takes its toll on all of this, all of these muscles here because they're the ones that are holding up your head. So make sure that for um, tension headache muscles that you work the upper part, the upper trap, the levator, the suboccipitals, and the rhomboids, and the uh, splenius capitis services. So all of those muscles can contribute to tension headaches. So we've addressed four different types of headaches. The tension headaches, number one, the migraines is number two, and then the TMJ, and then the sinus, sinus headaches. So I hope this helps you. Stay tuned for the next video. I appreciate your support. Make sure you give it a like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until the next time, creators.